Theology. So let's now look at an aerobic respiration, which is now the second type of respiration. So the first type of respiration, uh, we saw that it, it was aerobic respiration. Now this other type of respiration is now an aerobic respiration. So remember, for aerobic respiration, we say that this is the type of respiration which oxygen must be made present in order for food substrate to be broken down. So now, in this anaerobic respiration, let's define what is anaerobic respiration. So for this anaerobic respiration, we see that it mainly involves the breakdown of food substrate in the absence of oxygen. That is anaerobic respiration. So it mainly involves the breakdown of food substrate, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, in the absence of oxygen. So oxygen is not required for this respiration to take place. If oxygen is made available, it will mean that these organisms which do not require oxygen are going to die. If oxygen is made available, the organisms undertaking an aerobic respiration are going to die because oxygen will be poisonous to these organisms. So it mainly takes place in some bacteria and some fungi. We didn't say, we didn't generalize and say it takes place in bacteria and fungi. That would be wrong because some bacteria undertake aerobic respiration. Some bacteria undertake anaerobic respiration. That's why we must be specific and say that it mainly takes place in some bacteria and some fungi. So after that we see that mainly the organisms which obtain uh, energy through anaerobic respiration are mainly referred to as anaerobes. So an anaerobe, these are organisms which mainly undertake anaerobic respiration. So if any organisms undertake anaerobic respiration, that organism is referred to as an anaerobe. So for these anaerobes, we see that we have mainly two different types of anaerobes. So the first type of anaerobe, we have the obligate anaerobe. So obligate. So we have obligate anaerobe. Then the second type of anaerobe, we have the facultative anaerobe. So let's begin with the first one, definition of the first one. So which are organisms? These organisms which are called obligate anaerobes. So which, am a, who, am a, what are these organisms? So for the obligate anaerobes, we see that these are those organisms which do not require oxygen at all. If oxygen is made available, these organisms are going to die. Those are the obligate anaerobes. So these are organisms which completely, they do not require oxygen. If oxygen is made available, they are going to die. So oxygen for these organisms tends to be poisonous. So all of them are going to die. So those are called the obligate anaerobes. So after the obligate anaerobe, let's define the second one, which is now the facultative anaerobes. So for these facultative anaerobes, it, it, it now comprise of now the most organisms. So most organisms, most unicellular organisms are facultative anaerobes. So you see that these are those organisms which can survive either when oxygen is made available or uh, when oxygen is not available. So if oxygen is made available, they will survive. If oxygen is not available, they'll survive. In short, facultative anaerobes, these are organisms which can survive in either presence or absence of oxygen. So those are the ones which are called the facultative anaerobes. So remember obligate, they completely do not, uh, do not require to use oxygen. If oxygen is made available, these organisms are going to die. Facultative, they can either survive in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen. They can survive in either. So, however, we see that such organisms tend to survive better when oxygen is made present. Uh, when oxygen is not present, they are going to undertake anaerobic respiration. Some of them are going to produce ethanol because some of them behave like plants. Some of them are going to produce lactic acid because some of them behave like animals. And therefore, we see that this ethanol and lactic acid, if they are not, if they accumulate in the body, they are going to be poisonous. So they are going to slowly by slowly poison the cells or the organisms. Therefore, most of the facultative uh, organisms, they thrive or they survive best if oxygen is made available other than when oxygen is not made available. But however, facultative anaerobes, they do survive if oxygen is available or if oxygen is not, uh, uh, is not available. So, um, so this process below summarizes anaerobic respiration whereby 
we can see that in plants it's just picture glycolysis is somewhat almost similar to glycolysis but now here we are not going to form the pyruvic acid so for the anaerobic respiration in plants we see that glucose is broken down in the absence of oxygen to form uh, to form energy to form carbon dioxide it is while in plants we see that glucose will be incompletely broken down in animals also to produce lactic acid and energy so in plants remember we are going to produce ethanol so ethanol is going to be produced we are going to produce carbon dioxide and uh, we are going to produce also energy while in animals so glucose will be incompletely broken down to produce lactic acid and of course to produce energy so the energy obtained here is very low <laughs> it's a very low energy because glucose was incompletely broken down so we see that in most organisms when oxygen is not made available their tissue respire anaerobically for a short period of time the same same with the human being so the cells in the human being or basically let's just say all organisms so for all, for all organisms remember we say that most organisms are facultative anaerobes meaning that they can respire in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen and that's why we are saying that in most organisms when oxygen is not available so most of the tissues most of the cells most of the organelles are going to respire anaerobically for a short period of time as they await for intake of oxygen to come in order to get rid of the ethanol and the lactic acid that had built up so however we see that lactic acid that ethanol produced in these organisms should be removed immediately because if this lactic acid and ethanol are not removed from the cells and the tissues of the organisms that were respiring anaerobically in that short period of time if they were not removed in time these organisms are going to die because lactic acid if it accumulates to be high or to be more or ethanol if it if it accumulates to be even more in the cell so it is going to now start poisoning the cell slowly by slowly therefore the lactic acid and the ethanol if oxygen is made available should be removed immediately from the body of the organism because if left there in the body of organisms they are going to be toxic being toxic they are going to poison the cells the cells are going to die and if the cells die the whole organism is also going to die therefore lactic acid and ethanol must always be removed immediately from the body as soon as they are formed so for the anaerobic respiration uh, we see that it can also be called fermentation reaction so we can call it anaerobic reaction we can also call it fermentation reactions and by that we have two types of fermentation or fermentation reaction or two types of anaerobic reaction but the best term to use is we have two types of fermentation reaction in living organism so the first type of fermentation reaction we have alcoholic fermentation which mainly involves uh, which is mainly involved in plants after that we have lactic acid fermentation which is mainly involved in animals so from alcohol ethanol for plants so alcoholic fermentation is for plants while lactic acid fermentation from animals is for the animals so the alcoholic fermentation uh, mainly involves respiration by the use of yeast in plant which mainly produce ethanol so the ethanol remember for anaerobic respiration glucose is incompletely broken down to form ethanol to form carbon dioxide and energy so for this respiration it mainly uses the yeast cells uh, to produce the ethanol while lactic acid fermentation mainly involves the breakdown of uh, incomplete breakdown of glucose in the body to form lactic acid carbon dioxide and energy in the body so the reason as to why if you do strenuous exercise you start feeling uh, the pain in the muscles so this pain in the muscles is now what you refer to as i'm feeling tired so after you have run you have done some very strenuous exercise you say that i am feeling tired so the reason as to why you feel tired is because that is lactic acid which has been pumped on your muscles so if lactic acid is pumped on the muscles you start feeling that pain what do you call that pain you start calling that pain being tired so you feel tired so as soon as uh, 
you had felt tired and then you relaxed. So after relaxing, you took in oxygen, you took in oxygen. Then after some time, you started saying that I am not feeling tired anymore. Now I am okay. So the biology behind it is that uh, the reason you are saying you are feeling tired is because lactic acid was pumped in the muscle. So they brought that pain that you are calling feeling tired. So if you relax, you take in oxygen. So as soon as you take oxygen, this oxygen, remember the, the aerobic respiration. So if you take in this oxygen, this oxygen is going to break down the pyruvic acid. It's going to break down the lactic acid to form the carbon dioxide and energy. So if the lactic acid will be broken down from your body to carbon dioxide and energy, there won't be any lactic acid on the muscles. So if there are no lactic acid on the muscles, you'll start saying that I am not feeling tired anymore. Why? Because all the lactic acid in the muscles have been removed. So that is how uh, feeling tired, that is how to relate feeling tired and lactic acid and resting and intake of oxygen, blah, 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 everything. But anyway. Huh. So after that, we see that some bacteria, however, are used in the process of lactic acid fermentation, which is mainly brought about by, okay, bacteria. They break down, especially, they break down the milk. So if they break down the lactic acid in milk, so the milk is going to turn sour. So if the fresh milk is going to turn sour, we are going to say that the milk is heavy. So that heavy milk is uh, the milk which you are now referring to as the sour milk. So if you leave that milk there sour for again some time and then you come and take it maybe after one week you are going if you taste the milk you're going to feel some very strong taste on the tongue or you're going basically to feel some very strong taste so that very strong taste is brought about by the high concentration of lactic acid in that milk which has led the milk now to turn to be sour so some of the bacteria are used to make milk to be sour so these bacteria produce a lot of lactic acid. That lactic acid falls on the fresh milk. That fresh milk is going to be, it's going to be heavy, uh, which is called basically maziwamala. So it's going to form that maziwamala because it has a lot of lactic acid. If you leave that sour milk there again for a long period of time, you taste that milk, you're going to have that very strong taste. That very strong taste is brought about by the excess buildup of lactic acid in that sour milk. So that basically that strong taste is the taste of lactic acid in the milk. So apart from that also uh, we see that during strenuous exercise lactic acid is produced in the muscles whereby these muscles they use oxygen. If these muscles use oxygen so at a time it's going to reach whereby the oxygen level in the muscles is going to go down. So if oxygen level in the muscles goes down carbon dioxide will be produced in the muscle. If carbon dioxide is produced in the muscles it will mean that the muscular cells are going to lack oxygen. So if the muscle cells lack oxygen, it will mean that if oxygen is not available, the muscle cells are now going to begin to respire anaerobically. So if these muscle cells are going to respire anaerobically, it will mean that they are going to produce lactic acid. Why? Because oxygen is not available. So since oxygen is not available, these cells are now going to respire anaerobically to produce the lactic acid. So since they'll produce lactic acid, they'll bring the tired sensation, as we had said before. So for this uh, lactic acid in the muscles, we see that if oxygen is made available through panting or through resting, if oxygen is made available, we say that the lactic acid is going to be broken down to form carbon dioxide and energy. So this process of lactic acid fermentation basically leads to a phenomenon which is now called oxygen death. Let's assume you are running after running for maybe for some time after running for some time on the other end if you reach the other end you're going to feel very tired you are going to feel like i need to sit down and rest so in the process of sitting down and rest you will be breathing in very hard so you'll be breathing in very hard and the the, the volume of air you'll be taking in will be a very large amount of volume that you'll be taking in so you'll be breathing very hard and you'll be breathing very hard uh, okay, very hard <laughs> and very fast. So why do you breathe in very hard and very fast? So it is not you who has activated the process whereby you need to breathe in very hard and very fast. It's your brain. So your brain has activated the breathing process. And why has the brain activated the breathing process of breathing hard and fast? So the brain has detected that in the blood there is a high concentration of carbon for oxide. 
So since the brain has detected that there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide, what it has done, it has increased the breathing rate. So the breathing rate has now increased whereby you are breathing hard and fast. So why are you breathing hard and fast? You are breathing hard and fast in order for you to take in a lot of oxygen within a short period of time in order to remove the lactic acid that has built up on the muscles. So why is it that you are breathing hard and fast to get rid of the lactic acid? So remember in the previous session we say that lactic acid is poisonous to the cells. So the brain knows this. The brain knows that if this lactic acid continues building up, it will, it's going to poison the cells. If the cells die, so the body or the brain itself is going to die. So the brain doesn't want to die. So what it does is that it increases the breathing rate for you to take in a lot of oxygen. So as soon as you are taking in a lot of oxygen, so this a lot of oxygen is breaking down the lactic acid in the body. So as this lactic acid is being broken down in the body, what happens is that uh, there is going to be production of carbon dioxide and, and energy. So all this thing is brought about by this phenomenon of oxygen debt. So what's the meaning of debt? What is debt in short? So debt uh, in English, if you look at the dictionary, debt means uh, that something you owe and must later be paid. So if you owe something and, and must later be paid, that is what we refer to as debt. So we say that facultative anaerobes, they can use oxygen or they can use or they can respire without oxygen. So if your cells now begin using oxygen, they are going to produce a lot of carbon dioxide. If the supply of oxygen does not, uh, if the supply of oxygen mainly begins to be limited, it will mean that oxygen in the blood is going to go lower and lower, but the cells still require oxygen for respiration. So if the oxygen completely declines, these cells are still going to undertake respiration, but they are going to undertake respiration in the absence of oxygen. So in the absence of oxygen, in order just to provide that very low energy, low energy, are waiting for oxygen to come in order to continue with the respiration as usual. So you see that this now leads now to the phenomenon which is called oxygen debt, whereby the cells are going to respire in the absence of oxygen, knowing that oxygen is going to come. So if oxygen comes, we are going to remove this lactic acid and then continue with our process as usual. So we have mentioned oxygen debt, but what is now oxygen debt? So what is the definition of oxygen debt? So for the oxygen debt, we see that this is the amount of oxygen required to get rid of the lactic acid accumulated in the body when the supply of oxygen was low. That is oxygen debt. So just picture facultative anaerobes. They use oxygen if oxygen is available. If oxygen is not available, they undertake respiration in the absence of oxygen. So in the absence of oxygen, but now they are producing lactic acid. So they are producing lactic acid, awaiting for oxygen to come. So if oxygen, uh, if oxygen will be made available, they are going to release this lactic acid to be broken down with the oxygen in order to produce the energy that was required. So that is oxygen debt. It's the amount of oxygen required to get rid of lactic acid, uh, that had accumulated in the body when the supply of oxygen was low. So you see that when cells and tissue under, are undergoing oxygen debt, they start to respire anaerobically, i.e. the facultative anaerobes. So this anaerobic respiration basically causes a buildup of lactic acid in the muscles, which brings a sensation of saying, I am feeling tired. So as more and more lactic acid builds up in the muscles, it leads to fatigue, and muscle cramps. So the muscle cramp, maybe you are moving your hand and then you, you, you hear the muscles cramping, something like, I don't know, <laughs> but you hear the muscle cramping inside the body. So that is brought about by, um, that is mainly brought about by the buildup of lactic acid in the muscles. So it, it leads to someone feeling tired. If you continue feeling tired for a long period of time, it will lead to fatigue. So fatigue will also start to bring muscle cramps. Muscle cramps may now lead to muscle torsion. It may now lead to uh, muscle, not muscle cramp, but sprain. It may lead also to sprain, etc. So 
if oxygen is made available, it will get rid of lactic acid. If lactic acid is removed from the body, all these problems that might build up are also going to be removed or, are, or they are not going to, to show up in the body. So as we continue, we can say that an example of anaerobic respiration in animals is when maybe when one holds the breath uh, when swimming. So if you hold your breath when swimming, so immediately the cells will start undergoing anaerobic respiration or when maybe someone is running very fast or doing strenuous exercise. So that will lead to a high buildup of lactic acid due to anaerobic respiration. So after that we see that since uh, during holding breath no oxygen is being taken in, oxygen will be paid later when maybe that person will sit down and start panting or start breathing in very hard and very fast. So as this also happens, we see that the heartbeat also will increase. So the brain will increase the rate at which oxygen is taken in and also the rate at which oxygen is circulated in the body. How will it, increase, uh, how will it lead to the increase of the rate at which oxygen circulates the body? So it will increase the heartbeat. If the heartbeat increases, this will increase the rate at which blood is circulating uh, around the body. And if blood is circulating around the body very fast, it will also mean that oxygen will also be circulated around the body very fast. So apart from that, we can also uh, finally say that also during this period of holding breath, when someone is holding breath, some lactic acid will be oxidized to carbon dioxide water and energy. And this energy produced will be converted to glycogen and stored in the liver uh, to act as a reserve, uh, to act as energy for the future or to act as reserve energy. So if this lactic energy will produce a lot of energy when broken down by oxygen, it will be stored in the liver as glycogen. Biology.